Greetings, Sim Captains. I'm Tim. And I'm Lee. You might know us from our YouTube channel, Flight Brothers FT. And you're hearing from us in this video because we have joined the FS Leap video production team. So, when I'm not uh, busy flying pretend airplanes or making videos about it, I'm actually a public school teacher. My background is in music. I have a performance degree in trumpet playing. I've been simming though since the 1990s. I have a couple relatives who are in the Air Force and one of them brought over a laptop with Microsoft Flight Simulator and I was absolutely hooked. I switched over to X-Plane in the early 2000s and upgraded to X-Plane 11 in 2018. And I'm an aviation electronics technician for my day job. I spent 15 years in the United States Air Force as a NAVAIDS weather and communications technician. My interest in flight simulation really began in high school. Uh, we had a ground school program there, so we went through that to prepare us for the FAA written exam. And they had a Microsoft Flight Sim product, an early one. Flight Sim 2002, 2004, and on to FSX is where I really spent a lot of time developing, I guess what you would say is my craft for flight sim and enhancing the realism, incorporating those real world, real world procedures. All right, so both of us uh, are very excited by FS Elite's uh, vision to inspire the next generation of flight simmer. And we've talked about this a lot in some of our channels and just why we like it, but we find flight simming to be just a very holistic experience. I mean, your mind is simultaneously gonna be involved in dealing with geography, bits of history, map reading, math, charts, navigation, and just the joyful kinesthetic feel of controlling the aircraft. And I don't think you can downplay that. It's kind of like driving a manual transmission car for those few people left on this planet who can do that. It's more involved. You're connected with the machine and there's something very satisfying and gratifying about that. And when you're doing the hand flying in the sim, you get a little bit of that sort of feedback. Yeah, absolutely. And as Tim had mentioned earlier, in 2018, we migrated to X-Plane 11. And the type of flying we do, we fly military aircraft, civilian aircraft. And for the civvies, we do general aviation, regionals, long hauls, basically anything other than rotorcraft, we really do. Uh, the skill sets differ between aircraft and types of flying. You know, you're mostly IFR with the airlines. You're doing you know, VNAV and LNAV functions and really letting the system fly itself. Whereas with the smaller aircraft, you can focus more on VFR and hand flying. A lot of people may not be able to look at an air nav map and visually navigate from point to point using that dead reckoning and pilotage. So that's one of the things that's really fascinating about the smaller aircraft and the diversification between the two types of flying. There's numerous nav options. Uh, such as the GPS, the FMCs, as I'd mentioned, you know, with the old school slant alpha radio navs, you know, you're going VOR to VOR. And then you have, you have the oddballs like the SIVA, you know, using inertial nav systems, which are largely all archaic by today's standards. All right, that's it for the formal comments, Lee. How about we tell these guys how we got started uh, as, a, as a team, really? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I guess our Wives were the social butterflies, and that's kind of how we met was through them. Um, I, I always blame everything on my wife, so let's blame this one too. Yeah, sure, I'll let her take credit for this one. That way when they complain about the time we spend simming, I can say it's your fault. Well, now we try and go, well, we're trying to do these video things, so it's not really for fun specifically. Yeah, I'm, no. wor I'm working, this is work. Right, this is work. Not but, getting paid, but it's work. <laughs> but but anyway, so like they're talking about whatever they talk about at get-togethers, you know, and and Tim and I are just hanging out and we start talking about you know, aircraft flying overhead because we are on an approach departure path sometimes for uh, Phoenix Sky Harbor depending on which way they're rolling. Well and both of us are the kind of guys you can catch staring at the sky possibly pulling out their phones to see what little speck of light just flew over. Yeah it might be a UFO around here. Google Phoenix lights. <laughs> Certainly possible but no I, I think uh, you know uh, us uh, flight sim geeks just seek each other out uh, intuitively and Lee and I found each other and uh, not in that way <laughs> Lee came we were over. brought together we, was, we were brought together it was fate uh, Lee had come over and I was babying along an ancient laptop that had my old um, 
X-Plane 7 or something yeah, on yeah. it. And the laptop was so maxed out, I, I literally had ice underneath it to cool it down to keep it running. Yeah, you know, like the kind you put in the uh, camp refrigerator lunch yeah, bag Yeah, the things. refreezable things you put in your lunch Not like box. an ice block. Yeah. Because well, electronics and that and would be water. a terrible idea. Well, that, right. would, that could be how that story ends. Uh, true. Uh, but we, we got excited. Lee hadn't done X-Plane. He'd been in uh, FSX and was considering coming over. And I was really considering buying an appropriate modern computer. And so we both kind of got each other motivated. And I true. got this PC and uh, X-Plane 11. And I think you made it about, what, two weeks yeah, I think it was about two weeks before I bought one as well. Right, because once he tried it, he was just hooked at the uh, the quality X-Plane 11 was, was offering. Well, there was always the angst between the two parties. You were either one or the other, when, as we've stated in like live streams, and a sim, sim is, is a, a sim. sim. Right, if they do their job right, they should basically be the same. Agreed. At least in operation. Agreed. Uh, perhaps the uh, you know the clouds might be different, but the actual sim operations shouldn't uh, you know Boeing to Boeing. Right. Yeah. Uh, but the hilarious thing at the beginning of the channel was uh, Tim me didn't know anything, so I was flying direct to. I had no idea how routes were done, so uh, Lee had to uh, to hold my hand through that learning process. Mm, I didn't hold his hand for very long though. <laughs> it, it was sweaty and clammy. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I started buying some books and picking Lee's brain, and I just got excited about how how interesting and involved it was. But I remember it, it was also pretty intimidating. I mean, you've got to you've got to find the routes, you've got to find the appropriate aircraft, uh, the fuel level, the blah, blah blah blah. There's so many things to learn. Sure, and it is it is almost as steep of a learning curve as you want to make it because you can do what you were doing, right? You know, you get on there. I want to fly this plane from here to here. Direct to off you go. But when you start getting into the more realistic procedures, you know, why things function the way they function, then you get to appreciate the complexities of real aviation. So, generally speaking, I think our feel at Flight Brothers and why we want to work along with FS Elite is we want to bring you guys along with us in this journey of learning. We want to share what we've learned. We want to learn from you. We want to see the comments and find questions we don't know the answer to and dig into manuals and go find those answers because it's just so exciting, so engrossing, and really you can never know everything here. You know, and someone once told me everything you want to learn is out there in a book somewhere. You just got to find it. <laughs> that is perfect. All right, so once again, welcome to FS Elite. We're so happy to be coming on board, and we couldn't end a video without saying, plan the flight. And fly the plan. Fly the plan.